a 14 year old child goes to the fair with his nine year old sister and some old childhood friends to never be seen again. What happened to Jeremy Bright and why was this case never solved? Let's discuss on today's Peculiar Occurrences. Jeremy Dolan Bright was born on May 25th, 1972. Jeremy was born in Myrtle Point, Oregon, and for most of his and his sister Estes life, that's where they lived. That's also where they met some of their closest childhood friends, until one day his parents got a divorce and they had to move over a hundred miles away. They ended up moving to Grant's Pass with their mother, though summer was an especially wonderful time for Jeremy and his sister. He loved basketball and just all things sports, and in the summer he could go back home to where he was from and get to visit with his childhood friends and some family that were left there. It was late August and Jeremy and his sister were having a wonderful time visiting the Couscous Fair in Myrtle Point, Oregon. He and his sister had been left at the fair with absolutely no parental supervision as it was 1986 and back then a lot of kids their age were left to do things on their own. Um, kidnappings were not as widespread and if they were they were very rarely shown on television and such. So their parents thought they had absolutely nothing to worry about. Jeremy Bright was much like other boys. He enjoyed drawing and was very good at basketball as I mentioned earlier. And this was because he was actually very tall and wore a size 13 shoe. Um, his parents were noted saying that they believe he could have made an all-star team one day. Despite their parents' divorce, the two really loved the Coast Coast Fair. It was an event that rode into town for an entire week every single summer. And for them, it was also an excuse for them to go back and hang out with their childhood friends. Jeremy's very best friend was a boy named Johnny Fish, and this was a great opportunity for them to, to get together, hang out, eat some cotton candy, and catch up. On August 13th at 4.45 p.m., Jeremy had called his mother Diane from a payphone to finalize plans on her picking them up in Myrtle Point uh, on the 15th. He told her that he was having a great time. In return, she told him that he, she would be arriving in town within two days. Later that night, Jeremy went to go visit with his stepfather at the family tavern. Only about five hours later at 9.40 p.m., Jeremy showed up at the tavern where both his grandfather and grandmother worked, and his stepfather often hung out there. He visited with them for a little while and then asked the stepfather if he could borrow some money to spend at the fair, which the, st the stepfather happily gave to him. Unfortunately, this was the very last time any of them ever saw him again. On August 14th, Jeremy and his sister went back to the fairground for the second time. At around 2 p.m., the two decided to separate and go do their own thing, and at 5 o'clock, they would meet back up around the Ferris wheel. Well, 5 o'clock came and went, and Estes showed up, but Jeremy never arrived. Jeremy was last seen wearing a black windbreaker jacket with a pair of black Nike sneakers with red laces. Then sure enough, on August 15th, Jeremy's mother arrived to pick up both Jeremy and his sister and found that Jeremy's wallet, keys, and watch had all been left at the stepfather's place. So it seemed like Jeremy leaving, he 
didn't plan on being gone for very long. The following day, I don't know why they waited a day, but the following day, Jeremy's mother reported it to the police. The grandfather and stepfather and grandmother had not seen Jeremy since the Thursday beforehand when he had left the bar. At first, the police believed that perhaps Jeremy may have run away and joined the fair. Sergeant Steve Dalton of Coast Coast County's Sheriff Department at first looked at this case as if it was a runaway with the fair, but after investigating and questioning many family members, he soon realized Jeremy just was not the type to have gotten up and ran away especially without telling his little nine-year-old sister of whom he was very, very close to. The fair ended on Sunday, August 17th, 1986, and as the fair people packed everything up and headed out of Myrtle Point, it left the, it left the town people questioning everything and in dismay. They started pointing fingers at each other and pretty soon rumors started to fly. But still the question remained, what happened to Jeremy Bright? One of the rumors put Jeremy Bright at a Myrtle Point party where supposedly he had gotten a hold of a beer laced with a powerful drug that in turn caused him to overdose. Then, in an act of solidarity, all of the other party-goers um, got him and moved his body away from the scene. Now, rumors flew about this and an investigation happened, but nothing was ever found. And honestly, to me, it sounds a little bit too much like the plot to the movie I, I Know What You Did Last Summer. That's just my take on it. Another story puts Jeremy at a local swimming hole with a bunch of his friends. Supposedly, Jeremy had gotten into a scuffle with three other boys and was severely injured. The boys took him off 10 miles away and tried to nurse him back to health, but failed and he died. And supposedly, they buried him in a shallow hole in the area. Well, police got a hold of this rumor, and they did go out and search the area, and nothing, again, was ever found. Years later, another rumor started. Another account was reported where Jeremy had been seen riding in the passenger seat of Terry Lee Stanhoff's car, someone that had been a babysitter of him and his sisters when they had lived in Myrtle Point. This was the best lead that police could have hoped for. Now it was just a matter of questioning standoff and locating the boy. The year was 1989, a grueling three years after Jeremy's disappearance. When his case was featured on the television program Unsolved Mysteries, which brought renewed attention back to this case and to the rumors of Terry Lee Stanoff. It turns out Stanoff had been charged with stabbing 32-year-old Patricia Morris and leaving her for dead. The police renewed the search and expanded the area to include places that had cabins around Oregon and found nothing. Meanwhile, Stanoff, who was our best chance of finding Jeremy, was not being very cooperative. He knew that at this point there was absolutely nothing else they could do to him unless he incriminated himself. So he was very, very careful not to. Meanwhile, Jeremy's family finally has decided to try to move on. In 2011, they held a memorial service for Jeremy. In their mind, they have put him to rest. Will we ever know what truly happened to Jeremy Dolan Bright? I don't know. Maybe. Hopefully. I don't know. But I'd like to know what you think about this peculiar occurrence down below. And while you're down there, don't forget to check out my description box for your peculiar occurrence merch. 
And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. Share this out to all your peculiar friends. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell or you won't even know when I upload. Until next time, keep your eyes peeled for all things peculiar. Are you listening? Damn.